Hi, I'm Tom Whitaker. I'm a chef and a MasterChef 2011 finalist. I run a private dining company called Whitaker Bespoke, which offers fine dining all over the UK and London. I've been working with Udo's for some time now and believe that we've come up with some really amazing recipes, which although we've done it here in a professional kitchen, I think you can do it at home. Udo's is really versatile, and not only that, but I know it's good for me. For this recipe, we're going to make Udo's Ajo Blanco, which is a Basque version of gazpacho, but it's made with almonds instead of tomatoes and uses garlic, water, Udo's oil, salt and lemon. First things first, we're going to make a little garnish to go with it, and that garnish is pickled muli. Muli is this. Muli is a uh, Japanese radish, and it's quite crunchy, it's quite light, um, and actually works quite well being pickled because it adds a little bit of zest to it and a bit of crunch, and when you kind of combine that with a soup, it gives the kind of nice sort of mixture of t flavors and textures in the mouth. So first things first, we're going to make a very, very simple pickle, which is just roughly 50-50 white wine and uh, white wine vinegar and water with a little bit of sugar just to up the sweetness. If you don't put any sugar in it, it can be really bitter. Um, once again, there's no defined rule about how much sugar you use. It's just to taste. So once the sugar's dissolved, make sure that you taste it. And if you think it's too sweet, you know, add some more vinegar. If you don't think it's sweet enough, add some more sugar. Okay, so whilst that's heating up, we're going to just peel the muli. We're going to use the same peeler to take little kind of slices and ribbons off the muli. The reason we're using this is because we want them really thin. You can use a knife, but I would say if you can use a vegetable peeler, all the better. Just keeping an eye on our pickle here. No, it's not completely dissolved yet. So just nice little sheets. So, pickle's boiling, so the first thing is to taste it. Let's give it a try. Yeah, it's good. It's kind of nicely sweet without being kind of cloyingly sweet. What you don't want to do is put the muli into a boiling pickle because what will happen is it will just kind of disintegrate. As you can see, it's kind of quite thin and delicate. All it needs to do is go into the hot liquor now and just sit for five to ten minutes just to absorb some of the flavour. The idea is that you don't want to lose the crunch of the vegetable because that's a main kind of textual part of the dish at the end. So I'm just going to put it in, give it a little mix around so it's nicely coated. And then we can just let that sit for five minutes until the end. Right, so next we're going to make ourselves the actual soup. So we're using almonds to make the soup. The thing you have to remember with these is when you need to buy the almonds with the skin still on. Ideally, the classic way to make it is with fresh almonds when they've still got a big sort of green, thick skin on them, but getting hold of them in this country is now and impossible. And these actually work just as well. Whatever you do, don't buy the almonds that have already been had the skin taken off them because what happens is they dry in the bag and then when you make the soup, it becomes very chalky. So all you need to do is boil some water, pop the almonds in for a couple of minutes, take them out, and then you can literally squeeze them out of the skin and you just end up with a nice kind of white, clean almond like that, but it's still got moisture in it, it's not dry. I'll take those out. Right, so pull the almonds into the food processor. And then we're gonna add a couple of cloves of garlic, just chop them roughly into a couple of pieces. Doesn't need to be too precise because they're gonna get blitzed anyway. Okay. In there they go. And now we're gonna get the Udo's oil. Now what you wanna do here is just fill it up so it kind of semi-covers them. It doesn't, it's not an exact science making this soup. It's all done by flavor and taste. So as you start to process it, you'll know whether it hasn't got enough oil in or not. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pour it in. I'd say that's about enough. Give it a quick stir. Yeah, it's kind of just covering the, the almonds in the processor, which is ideal. Now. Okay, so next we're just gonna add some lemon juice and some salt. Usually, if you're using kind of 200-ish grams of almonds, I would say one lemon, one and a half lemons worth of juice. Um, 
Good squeeze, make sure you don't get any of the seeds. And a little pinch of salt. You want a reasonable amount of salt in this because obviously the thing that people forget is when something's served cold, um, the flavour dulls down. So actually what you end up with is what tastes nice when it's room temperature actually doesn't always taste so great when it's cold because it's, it's the same in reverse. Obviously what tastes okay when it's cold when you heat it up becomes too strong. Put this back on now and then we're going to slowly add water and what you'll see happening is the it'll kind of change colour from this sort of yellowy colour to a really kind of creamy, almost sort of off green colour. So now we're going to stop and have a little taste. So once again, you, when you're tasting, you're looking for two things. You're looking for, obviously, the flavour. Is it salty enough? Does it have enough lemon in it? You know, trust yourself. If you think that it hasn't got enough acidity, add more lemon. You know, if you think it's not salty enough, add a little bit more salt. But what you're also testing for here is the consistency of it. It should be kind of the consistency of, you know, between somewhere between single and double cream. Um, you don't want it to be too loose because otherwise it, it loses all the flavour, but you also don't want it to be too thick because once it cools down in the fridge, it becomes sort of claggy and is not so enjoyable to eat once it's in the bowl. That's excellent. It's just the right level of acidity and saltiness. So now we're ready to plate up. So, you know, any little bowl will do. I like these little glass bowls because you can see through them so it kind of adds to the effect. Um, we're going to take... Get a ladle, just take it off, and just spoon some of the mixture in. You can see what I mean when I pour it into what about the consistency. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of not quite double, but not quite single cream, um, and it just sort of. I mean, you may find that you like it slightly looser. You may find you like it slightly thicker. This is just the way that I like to do it. But you know, you can mess around with it. Next, we're going to get a couple of the little pieces of the moolie. And if you just take them out, put them on your board, just kind of, you know, give them, give them a bit of height because actually when you're serving something like this, if they're flat and they kind of lay on the surface of it, it, it just loses the effect a little bit. So we're just going to gently pick that up and put it nicely in the middle like that. And then finally, just a couple of little sprigs of chervil. I prefer churro to parsley because it's softer, so it doesn't kind of get, get stuck between your teeth, but it also has more flavour. It's like a little star anise flavour, um, and it just adds something to the dish. And that is Udo's Ajo Blanco with pickled mouli and chervil.